what's going on you guys welcome back to another video man i want to thank y'all for being so patient with me while i done took this two week break off from recording um i told y'all on the community post that i had been sick the last few weeks and i'm still kind of getting over what i have as a stomach virus and it really started early last week i felt myself just um coming down like with a mild cold it really just started off with dry coughing and then that went on to me um i got a fever and the fever i only had the fever like two days i started having body aches um i mean just everything associated with a cold and then I just kind of shook back from that, you know, took uh, cold medicine and stuff like that. And I felt myself getting better. And so I think I just kind of rushed myself, you know, to, to feeling better. And I went right back to work like two days later. I took two days off last week. I went right back to work on Thursday and it just came back down on me again but this time followed by just like severe stomach aches. I mean, I mean, it took the best of me. I don't know what it was, but it had me for a minute. It had me. It had me down bad from that Thursday evening and that Friday. I don't know what got into me because I pushed myself to go to work anyway. Now, I did go to work Thursday of last week and I started to feel bad again but I thought that I could just kind of shake it off the next morning and I just start feeling dizzy nauseated like I had like severe stomach pains it was like burning bloating I was just full of gas like my stomach was huge and hard I was just miserable I was in pain I was like, I don't know what this is that can come over me, but Lord, why, me? why, why is this happening? I thought I wasn't going to make it. I ain't going to lie. So I came home early Friday, uh, just dealt with it the best way I could over the weekend. Um, uh, my children and my man helped me over the weekend with food and medicine well i couldn't eat i completely lost my appetite that's another thing i lost 13 pounds i lost that weight so fast followed by uh vomiting diarrhea i was sick i was out of it i'm telling y'all feel so much better and for the longest like for a couple of days after I started to feel better, probably was like Sunday night. So uh, Monday, I had called the doctor to see if I could get in that day. And he was like, I can't see you till Wednesday. I was like, oh, Lord. Because I don't like to waste money going to like after our clinics. Um, I'd rather see my own primary care doctor. So what he did was squeeze me in at Tuesday morning. And... um got me med got my medicine sent in and stuff like that so i've been shaking back pretty good feel much much better than i was from last week i'm not really ready to come on camera yet because like i said i've lost a lot of weight and you will see it all in my face you'll probably see it in my face again when i record again in a couple of days when i go on camera again in a few days y'all will see me i just didn't want to go on camera today for this video but I just want to let y'all know where I've been. I've been sick. But again, I'm much, much better now. And thank y'all for um the messages and everything that y'all left under that post. I appreciate it. Um, I go back to the doctor Tuesday just to get a little checkup and everything. Um, yeah, and what else? Yeah, I lost a lot of weight. I lost 13 pounds. And I lost a lot of energy. I lost a lot of fluid. I was weak. 
I could hardly even walk from my bed to the bathroom. And my, you know, my bathroom is right in my bedroom. I could barely walk to the living room, to the kitchen. I was just that down. I'm telling you, it had the best of me for a minute, but I'm back now. I'm feeling much, much better. It just felt so good to be able to just walk outside, but I ain't going to lie, I was scared at first to <laughs> walk to my car because I was thinking that I'm going to fall out. I was just that weak. Like, I lost so much energy behind not eating. I hadn't ate, even though I had started to feel better last week after taking off those two days sick. I still wasn't eating within those two days. I think between those two days, the only thing I had was like two sandwiches. And I had a lot of water, a lot of um, electrolyte, you know, drinks and stuff. But it all just came back up. I couldn't hold nothing down. Just the thought of food would make me sick in the stomach and nauseated. Just the thought of just pretty much anything. Like I was just... I couldn't smell nothing, like I couldn't even really taste. I just couldn't get the taste of the food that I was trying to force myself to eat. And I really wasn't trying to eat nothing heavy, you know, just like a piece of bread or crackers or something. It was horrible. It was horrible, but anyway, just wanted to let y'all know about that. So, um, in this video, I want to talk about another long overdue topic something that you know a lot of people have asked me to talk about but I just really couldn't I don't know I just really couldn't do a video on I really couldn't go into this topic because I wasn't ready to I'll just say it like that but I titled this video the master key to healing after narc abuse um you know a lot of time a lot of videos are about narc abuse and just what to look out for in a narcissist. But I just want to kind of break it down, you know, by keys of what to look for as far as going towards healing, going towards your healing journey, what you're going to need when you're, when you're getting ready to, to begin that healing journey, what you're going to have to tell yourself. And again, I just broke it down by keys i'm gonna just say it like that and then i'm gonna get to the master key so number one is self-awareness and that's just knowing that something is not right you know that good feeling that we get when we know that we're being manipulated or controlled when we know that someone is just flat out lying to us you know when we know that someone wants us to question our own reality you know, our perception of things. Because narcissists are known to gaslight us. So they want us to question our own sanity. And if they can get us to believe that, well, maybe we were just, you know, we tripping. Maybe we seeing things that are not there. You know, that's how they kind of have that power over you. But the self-awareness, you know, the one of the keys to healing is being self-aware and knowing that you know it's all a mind thing with this person that you're dealing with and it's all about how much control you allow them to have over your thoughts number two is recognizing that there is a problem and not you know like just sweeping it under the rug turning the blind eye to what's really going on you know, knowing that something is not right with this person that you're dealing with, something is not right with the things that they're telling you. You know, that's number two, recognizing the problem. And stop holding your thoughts into yourself. Express yourself more and let them know that, you know, you're not sold on the things that they tell you. You're not just going to go on the first thing they put inside your mind and you're not going to make yourself believe those things. So that's the second key to healing. Number three is knowing how to deal. You know, and that comes with communication. And with communication is, you know, not so much confronting the problem, the narc, but more so of just 
letting them know that you are aware of what's going on and deciding not to believe them, deciding not to deal with them, letting them know that, you know, you your own self person and you're going to kind of do things the way you choose to do it on your own time and not allowing them to get inside your mind to make you believe, well, if you don't pretty much follow my lead, then things are just not going to work out in your favor. You know, it's just pretty much telling yourself that you don't have to believe those lies anymore. You don't have to believe the things that the enemy is trying to put inside of your mind. It's just having a mind of your own, having your thoughts for yourself, and choosing to just do things that way. And number four is being bold. Just to be bold is just simply speaking up for yourself. And not only for yourself, but speaking up for others. And what I mean by that is, you know, that kind of goes back to that, you know, your relationship with your significant other. And you may have to deal with their toxic parents. And when dealing with their toxic parents, or you may, you're going to witness, you know, a lot of how toxic they are you know, with your partner. And the, with that, you're going to be able to see just why the person, you know, why they are the way they are is because of their parent being a narc or just being a very toxic person. And with that, a lot of times they're going to try to turn, you know, they're going to try to turn their children against you they want to break that up they don't want to see they don't want to see you happy they don't want to see their children happy you know the narcissists they want to have total control over their loved ones from you know from a child all the way up to an adult they want to control everything in that person's life and that includes in their personal life and you're going to witness that but the thing about it is the person who you're dealing with, they're going to have to learn how to be bold, speak up to that narc parent, and let that narc parent know that you're not going to be disrespectful towards the person who I'm with. And that's what I mean about speaking up for yourself and being bold. Because if that doesn't happen, that narc parent is going to continue to disrespect, you know, the partner and cross these boundaries. And another thing, being bold means setting boundaries. Sometimes you have to set boundaries with your parents. Sometimes people may feel like, you know, they go by that golden rule where, you know, that's my mom or that's my dad. You only get one mom, you only get one dad. But that doesn't mean that they don't have to respect you. There's still a level of respect that they should give you. And they should understand that when you become an adult, you're going to make your own decisions and they don't have the right to just step in and try to just totally control your life, you know, because what they're going to end up doing is causing you to lose people. If you don't be bold and speak up to them and let them know, you know, that they got to respect you. So that kind of some of the things that you're going to need, those are the keys that you're going to need in order to move forward to healing you're not going to heal until you're able to confront these things and again that's being aware being aware that there's something wrong there's being aware that that relationship you have with someone is just not right and it's being able to pinpoint out you know just not giving constantly giving them the benefit of the doubt where nobody's perfect everybody deserves a second chance because that's right up their alley you know you're giving them exactly what they want when you it's kind of like you're giving them excuses to be the way they are you know it's like you you allowing them to hurt you to damage you to cause this trauma within you so what you want to do is say, 
I understand what's going on now. You know, pinpoint out the problem. Let it be known that you know that there's a problem. Again, not confronting, but communicating. And letting them know what, that you're deciding what you're not going to deal with. Because it's all about a level of respect. And again, you have to be bold. Speak up for yourself. Not only for yourself, but for others. You know, you have to love and respect those who love and respect you. Recognize those who respect, who recognize you. You know, be there for those who are there for you. Because what NART families do is get inside of your mind and they make you think just because we're blood, you know, you have a duty that you must uphold by always putting us first no matter what. And that's not true. That is like the furthest thing from the truth. You don't owe that toxic family nothing. If anything, you want to get far away from them as you can because that's going to help your healing journey. But what you don't want to do is constantly keep ties with them and let them know every single thing going on in your life. Because they want to keep that perfect family image going. And they know that there's no, <laughs> there's nothing perfect that happens in that family. There's nothing perfect about your upbringing. There's nothing perfect about nobody's upbringing. But when it comes up to that narc family, they put themselves at such a high standard and such grandiosity to where they feel entitled to just always have that power and control over you in your life no matter how old you are, and they don't want certain things getting out. They don't want you discussing certain things that happen in the family with other people. Oh, because that's going to cause embarrassment. So don't speak on that because that's going to make us look away. See, that's that embarrassment that the narcissists don't want to get out there. And any other person, they don't look at things like that. They look at it like, you know, we're humans, it's life, it happens. We recognize the problem within ourselves. We work on it. We grow. We do better. But narcs don't look at things like that because they've already, you know, they've already established this mindset to where they're perfect. So there's nothing to work on because I'm already perfection. And there's no such thing as perfection. We are working towards being better. And so that's why they want you to be discreet about the things that you speak on from which they have harm you you know if they've done anything to hurt you they don't want you to be vocal about that they want you to keep it to yourself be silent be private you know don't speak on everything everybody don't have to know it's like they want to control you and get inside your mind and make you think that it's a bad thing if you you know just be free to just communicate as freely as you want to be as you want to, with whom you want to. They just want to have their total control over everything about you. And again, these are keys to healing. But the master key to healing is just simply being happy, being free, and being who you want to be. But in order to do that, you've got to be bold and you have to be willing to to speak up for yourself because when you don't speak up to these narcs once you have removed yourself away from them you have to speak up to them you can't keep tiptoeing around them and let them believe that you know they get to set the narrative or whatever they want in order to make themselves feel good in the mean in the meantime you're still miserable and you're not all that happy about it but you're gonna go ahead on and deal with it just for the sake of keeping peace between you two. You don't owe the narcissist anything. You don't owe the narcissist peace. You owe yourself peace of mind. And that's the key. The master key to healing. You know, all of those keys, all of them are going to work towards something. That's going to help you heal. But the master key towards healing is to be happy, be free, just being who you want to be. 
But in order to do that, you have to be bold. You have to be bold enough to speak up and say what you're not going to deal with anymore. You got to cut it off. You have to stop them from being able to, to, to come to you with certain things, to have that, that open access to you anytime they want to. You have to be the one to cut that off. You got to change those locks and let them know you're not welcome here anymore. You can't come to me with that no more because it's going to only lead to the same thing. It's going to keep taking you to the same interest of nowhere. There's never going to be any peace of mind or happiness or any clarity. You'll never have any clarity of what's going on because they're going to constantly manipulate you and control your thoughts. That's their main goal is to be able to control your thoughts. If they can control your thoughts, they got you. All you are is a puppet to them. And you're never going to heal if you continue to give them that power over you. If they can say certain things to you to get inside your mind and make you just kind of deep, go into a deep thought. And I'm going to give y'all a quick example for in this video. The man who I'm with, his mom, I told y'all about everything that happened um, in a few videos back. And I haven't spoken to her since then. But she had spoken to me and everything to him and she made a comment to him the other day that i bet you she knows everything about our family you know like don't discuss our family you know anything that happened in our family just don't discuss our problems you know stuff like that that happens in normal relationships she don't want him to speak to me about it that happens if we in a relationship we're going to communicate about things like that. If anybody's in a relationship with someone, you know, and that's the level of communication they have as far as just talking to each other. Things are going to come up. But see, where, where she comes from is a place of guilt because she knows that she's wrong for trying to control him and control his narrative like they're just perfect people. She know that she came at me wrong. She have too much pride to apologize without making it seem like I'm the problem. But she knows who she's dealing with and she can't get over on me like that. Not with me. You got the wrong one. So then that game, she already lost it. She know that already. But she knows she could get in the side of his mind and manipulate him into believing, you know, don't say certain things to Felicia because... What she's going to do is gossip about our family business to outsiders. And that's not going to happen. I don't care. That's not me. I don't got nothing to do with what's going on with y'all family. That's not going to happen. But that's what narcissists want you to think. To beware of what's going to be put out there if you run your mouth. That's another way of them controlling you. And until you come from up under their power and be bold, speak for yourself, Speak up for yourself and let them know that that's not going to happen. And you have to speak up for that person as well and let them know, you know, I'm not going to allow you to attack them and to try to put them out there as a bad character because they're not. You know, the narc is going to continue to keep trying to play that role with you. But once you put them in their place, they're going to know where their role is in your life. Whether it's in your life or out of your life, Either way it goes, they're going to respect you at the end of the day. And that is going to be your key to healing. That is what's going to make you happy, free, and happy to be whoever you want to be. Because you're going to be free from all of that. And you're going to know it. You're going to know it and you're going to feel it. And you're going to just have the ultimate peace of mind and can't nobody touch it. Nobody. You know, so I hope this video was helpful to anyone who, you know, want to hear some things about healing. Because it goes way back to being able to confront everything from the beginning. And that's where your healing is going to start off at. You're going to have to be bold, you know, and confront the real and what's really going on between you and it's 
toxic entities. So thank y'all for watching. Leave your thoughts 